It's that time of the day, that time of the hour. Welcome back for another brand new episode of Beyond Exposition Podcast. We are the three most favorite co-hosts in the entire world. My boy Brett, my boy Dude. Brad, and myself, Eduardo. Dude. It's Friday, baby. It's Friday. <laughs> We're back in the virtual, or not the virtual studio, La Casa. La Casa. Yeah. How's it going, boys? go either way. No, I wouldn't go either way, yeah. How are you guys doing? Good? Uh, fantastic. Fantastic. Good. Cool. You know? What about you, Brad? Before there's, a, there's a lot of what? No. <laughs> no, so how are you doing? No. Oh, oh, lean forward. Oh, I thought you said be, I thought you said be forthcoming. I was, oh, like, yeah. I was like, what? Tell how us you, how you how really are you, Brad? Be feeling. forthcoming. I was yeah. like, no, 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 no. no. I'm, 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 I've got the teddy bear. Where just, I'm just the teddy bear. Rolling with the punches. <laughs> rolling with the punches. Here. Here. <laughs> No, but one ah. thing about a rip, man. I got. I got to ah. talk about the ensemble, man. I, the 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 first thing that I said when you walked into the into the studio, mm. I was like, "This man looks like he owns a yacht. Maybe one out one, but two. Yeah. I'm sorry. Fresh yeah. off the yacht. I just bought, brought a bunch of migrants over. <laughs> there's there's eight different alternative outfits to the Catalina wine mixer, and that's, yeah, that's number one. One of them for sure. Man. No, dude. God, you know, right off rip. Uh, let's, let's go into this, man. Worldwide, baby. Yeah. Let, let's go Both into knows. this, right? Uh, we're talking about the movie Step Brothers in reference of that right love that movie you know what's insane and we were uh i actually was watching this interview with vince vaughn phenomenal yes. actor okay yes. so they were they asked him like why is it that nowadays you can't make comedies like they made before wedding crashers uh old school step brothers uh -huh. like why is it now that there's such a just i guess such a limit on what's pushing the needle too far in regards to just comedies and having that type of humor where you know we're we're just busting balls, right? It's, it's like a, it's a phenomenal movie. It's funny because I sent you a clip of old school where oh, they're getting God. all the, all they're the recruiting. alumni. <laughs> yeah. And and I was just telling you like this to me was the, like, I want to, will we say, is it safe to say it's like the golden era of comedy yeah. at that time? Old school. Definitely Van Wilder, for us. All for of our generation. Sure. So, I think at this point, like going forward, even now as of recent, can we say, aside from the Hangover movies, because that was still kind of in that era, I feel like, but, can we say like other movies that have that comedic approach and, but just overall like dang that was a solid funny movie like y y like you could go back and watch that thing five times oh dude they used to put out bangers yeah. back in the day yeah but it's like now it's it just sucks because we're really missing that but anyways back to the the vince vaughn interview that i was watching they asked him like like can you make that type of movie nowadays like you really can't well it's just because like there's so and i don't know why like where did where did we really stop Entertainment wise, putting this like movies like that out, comedic wise. If you, oh, go ahead. Go sorry. On. No, you. Uh, I was gonna say like a perfect example to me of that actually is is Seinfeld. Okay. Like, if okay. you go back and watch Seinfeld, there's yeah. no way that would fly today. Really? There's no way. I've, yeah. There's racial. I've seen jokes, episodes here and there, so, but not all. So of them, like yeah. one example from Seinfeld yeah. that was very, you know, a, a gay person would come on, right, and they'd yeah. be like, oh, he's gay, and then Seinfeld would say. Not that there's anything wrong with that, you <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. but that's totally off limits in today's comedy. Oh, yeah. And and Jerry Seinfeld himself has said um, he refuses to go to, I think back in 2016, he refuses to do stand up any shows at college um, campuses, and college campuses ah, anymore okay. because they just, they, they light them up. They eat them alive. Yeah. And we've talked about uh, how stand up, stand up comedy has kind of. I would say recently been kind of revitalized. Like yeah, things I would are, say so, yeah. Things are getting a little more risque, and yeah. like people are kind of just like, you know, it's comedy, like, like screw it. We're just going to yeah. say what, you know, we're going to kind of bring it back old school, and I, I'm hoping that's the way movies start to go, but it, not so far. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I think a, a lot of this stemmed from the social justice, all of that fighting that we okay. were going through, and, and it was just like everything was off limits, and it was like almost like they wanted to do a complete reset on entertainment, on everything, on our whole culture, yeah. to say, uh, to redefine or to uh, redecide what was going to be funny and what was off limits and what not. Right. And so it just got us in this dark period where everybody was afraid to crack a joke. Yeah. You know? When do you think that period started? I have my opinion. I think, I, I so I think it was really on the upswing in 2016, but I think it was even before then. I want to say it started the seed probably 2012. I was gonna say even earlier. Okay, I, I was so. gonna say. I was gonna say. Um, I feel like ra race, racially charged comments and stuff like that have always been a thing. But I feel like right after September 11th, the way that Middle Eastern people were treated, that kind Dude, of. Dude, we had Team America. 
I know, I know, but but yeah, right, think of all the think of all the even, terrible names people were calling like yeah. all like all the people from the Middle East, like yeah, you know from yeah. Afghanistan and Iraq and blah, blah. I don't I mean, see color, so what were they calling them? <laughs> it, so I think it started there, like restarted there. It restarted there, I think. Like that's when things started. Like, oh, you can't say that, and then like, oh, well, that offends them, and yeah. and then pretty soon, like, it was like a snowball effect of like yeah. all these people being offended. You can't say Merry Christmas anymore because you know. All Which the- that's one thing I'm happy that Trump says he's going to bring back again. Did you hear about that? Yeah, that's what he. he well, yeah, he, he said, said that. that. Merry he's, Christmas. He, he said, said I'm going to bring. That's one of his campaign things. He's like, I'm going to bring Merry Christmas back to the. Well, no, United he said States. that when oh. he was president. He, he said it again too. Yeah. 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 Said. Interesting. But, yeah. He, yeah. Anyway. Oh, that's not good. He said it when he was president, but he didn't do it. <laughs> he, did. No, he, didn't do he, it. he did bring it back. We he had did. it for a while. Oh, for like a year. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think like, it left anywhere for me. In yeah, my opinion. I, was I, I, I was always saying Merry Christmas to people. <laughs> I've just been programmed to say Happy Holidays now because it's not appropriate. Yeah. I, so, that, I've never heard of that. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. It okay. is. Well, being white, you would be under more scrutiny. You know, oh. <laughs> brown people get away with a lot more than us. <laughs> less melanin enhanced folks. Yeah. It's like that. Uh, There's rules we have to follow. <laughs> yeah, did, I, did you not be with some butthead? I think I think we're, we're talking about how comedy is being revitalized, but. I sent you a clip of Beavis of Butthead where uh, they were talking about like white privilege. Oh, and yeah. They're like doing everything and anything illegal. <laughs> He's like, I was told I can do this. White privilege. And they're doing everything. Like, yeah. it was just so funny. Yeah. But it's like that type of stuff where it's like on the humor base. I'm like, I just don't get why people got so uptight. It's crazy to me that like, Especially when we all get together as, you know, whoever, right? If you're with a group of people when we're just, you know, cracking jokes here and there, yeah. it's like we're having a good time. It's all about just having a good time, having a few laughs. Didn't they say, like, un- is, is laughter is universal where it brings people together? Like, right. especially with, like, stand-up, right? Yeah. Like, all these, like, back in the days, there was a point in time where there were certain things, even, like, com- like comedians where they didn't want to go on and touch base on, like, topics-wise. But it just feels like now it's, like, the lid's kind of popped open where they're letting everything fly. And, you know, there's really no mercy on anything yeah. now. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. I just, it was one of those things where it came to me today thinking about it. Like, where did this whole thing where... It, it was just like a hush hush. We can't talk about that, and we can't cross those lines or even just bring it to the table on topic of discussion. Yeah. Especially if you're joking around, it's like the hell. Like so when do people get so uptight about stuff like that? One thing I have always appreciated about this podcast yeah. is we knew that there were things off limits, right? Yeah. We knew that there were lines that weren't supposed to be crossed. Yeah, we crossed them. <laughs> we crossed no. them. We knew it. Yeah. We knew we crossed them, and. You know, we we suffered the the Google or the YouTube gods. They uh, they struck struck us what twice? Yeah, you know? uh, yeah, yeah, twice. Yeah, twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We so make sure so they got there. us twice, and so but we never stopped. We we didn't take that strike. When you would tell me, hey, we got a strike or whatever, you never once told me, hey man, let's tone down the yeah. stuff. Let's do this. Let's do that. You never once said any of that. And, you know, it was me, myself, just because I knew I was the reason for both strikes. <laughs> White privilege. <laughs> you know? White privilege. <laughs> yeah. We're going to push it further. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> but, 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 you know, we, we, because I knew by watching comedians, yeah. you know, like the Joe Rogans, the Andrew Schultz, yeah. the, you know, the, all those kind of people, Theo Vaughn. Yeah. They, they weren't taking it sitting down they were like no we're gonna do this anyway because there is an art to comedy and what makes comedy comedy funny is you take real situations that are just completely asinine completely make no sense and you have to talk about it because it just shows the the stupidity or the you know the outlandishness of some of this stuff that the power beers are trying to shove down our throats. Yeah. So when you find people like Joe Rogan, Andrew Schultz, Theo Vaughn, all those, and they, and they go through it anyway, like, you know, and say, I mean, say some of the most flagrant <laughs> yeah, stuff, no dude. pun intended. They let it fly, bro. <laughs> you know that we're going to make it. We're yeah. going to make it because they're still all around. Yeah. You know, all those names. In fact, those names have only gotten bigger. Yeah, so. definitely. No, I agree, man. I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's i just think to me like when we get together as just even on the pod right i wish there was really no i guess 
really no filter where we can just let everything fly. Well, we get to that. We will get to that point eventually. Oh yeah, hopefully, Willie. You know, but because there's times where like we'd have conversations just off the pod where like it's gold. Like this stuff that we talk about. Oh, yeah. I wish you would have said something like on the pod in regards to this, but you know, it's only certain things where. Like there is a limit, but there really isn't. But then we kind of like tether with it a little bit to where let's see how further we could push it before, you know, we get our third or fourth final strike or whatever. Right. But which sucks because it's like at the same time, like I all the hard work we put into all our clips and all that stuff, our episodes, it's like it's kind of go bye bye. And then we have to like pretty much restart over again. Yeah. So it kind of sucks in that aspect. But I don't but, know. Man. Well, uh, speaking of, you know, YouTube, um, you know, the lady that was the reason for both of our strikes. You heard about oh, her, right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Dose. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. She's yeah, no longer here with us. Let's just say that. That's crazy. <laughs> and I haven't heard anyone really, truly sad about her death. That's the thing. <laughs> Maybe there's no more algorithmic uh, corrections, you know, anymore. People were saying about that. Like, God, dude, the Internet is brutal when it comes to stuff like that. They're oh, like, yeah. the algorithm is free once again. And I'm like, I don't know about <laughs> we, we can only hope, but. Right. Right. You know, well, I didn't they say actually is in in terms of Google um, that they're actually going to split them as a company, like because they they're too much of a big monopoly. monopoly. Yeah. yeah, they were saying that they were going to pretty much separate the company, but it's like, can they really do that? I mean, yeah, they've yeah. done that with a number of, of oh really yeah. uh, industries. So like, uh, hmm. yeah, interesting. Uh, like cable companies, for instance. yeah, they're like like ABC owns like a lot like not just abc mm. it's kind of like disney now owns yeah. hulu and espn right right yeah so okay, all, okay. all of them are all connected abc too oh really yeah oh wow okay so yeah that's something i didn't know um yeah there's a there's a like airlines you've seen them um that kind of thing uh I can't like didn't it. Virgin buy out a different airlines too or something like that? Yeah. Or that's just different. It's buy- like Southwest or something like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. So pretty much they they don't want to eliminate it. They want to eliminate that type of stuff because they want it to be fair competition, I guess. Yeah. Is that because kind of they're they're fair. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, they quotations. Yeah. I mean, because you know they have their search uh, search platform that's connected with everything else, and they're like, dude, you are not allowing any competition to come in and do anything. Yeah. You, you've you've cornered the market. Mm. And uh, I haven't so, heard of a new search engine since Bing. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or ask Jeeves. Yeah. Remember Ask Jeeves back in the days? Yeah. That ask was before Jeeves. Google. Yeah. I mean, to oh, me, yeah. yeah. That's Jeeves. what I used to use. Yeah. Yep, as Yahoo. Yahoo. Yahoo, Brave, no, Brave. I remember Brave, no, really? MSN, MSN was one, yeah. and uh, yeah, then Google just it came like a wrecking ball, and it just pretty much everything. Google this, Google that, Google that. I'm the captain. That's now. like a, it's like a, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like yeah. common phrase, a common phrase people use. Google it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Literally. Literally. Yahoo it. So I've never that's heard anyone crazy. say that. Ask Jeeves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's actually funny. I, yeah, that's crazy, right? Back in the days. We AOL, back in the days, too. Oh, yeah, AOL. AOL. You got Ask mail. Jeeves? <laughs> Literally, <laughs> man. Nah, dude. More of a story, though. Where did the comedy go? We got to see oh, if Ask Jeeves. Oh, 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 hopefully, hopefully, it comes back at full swing and uh, we can uh, have good movies again, you know? So, because comedy, comedy in general was just one of my biggest, like, you know, genre movies that i enjoyed especially old school i actually uh i told my wife i need to watch that because she's never seen it oh, oh dude i have yes that's on the yes. plan is it still, it's still around ask jeeves is still around hey, yep <laughs> still up and running so ask jeeves for um, anybody what's following alternative yeah. she's never watched old school no oh wow no she's a. Uh, she likes comedy but i think it's more of the comedy like like dry comedy like uh the office uh-huh like that also that's another show too where dude some of the stuff they wrote in that, in that show, oh dude, pretty brutal. Oh like, yeah, and, and they, I think Steve Carell even said, yeah, I don't think we're gonna do The Office nowadays. There's Guaranteed. no way, dude. Yeah, they oh, would, they would get shredded. Definitely dude. not. Yeah, but it's to me, <laughs> yeah, that was there's like, no way. <laughs> and that's yeah. and you know what's funny about The Office? Is, <laughs> they make fun of the the like the black dude that's in The Office. They fuck, they mess with, excuse me, they mess with him all the time too. Really? Yeah, and just lots of gay jokes. <laughs> oh so, yeah. yeah. Well, you know what's funny about that is. <laughs> office was when i was in high school and and that was like tame yeah. to me so really? for them to say that that's all no you know, dude, yeah they, did you watch it all uh, I mean, the steve carell I watched one it. you watched all of them okay oh the i office? don't know if i watched all of them. oh no, there, there are certain watched. episodes just like everything yeah, yeah. They're a little more you know I, I haven't even watched every yeah. Seinfeld, you know? Yeah. I've watched every Seinfeld. Have you? Multiple times, yeah. yeah. I, the only thing There's, I've ever watched a full season of is Friends. 
Friends. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm that's... just kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's you know, let's switch that to Sopranos. <laughs> I got, you got to do it for the image. It's really interesting. It's really I just interesting. did that for the for the algorithm. <laughs> if you've seen Seinfeld, Sopranos, Sopranos. If, if you've seen Seinfeld, you can almost tell by watching a movie or like a show if one of the writers was. A oh, dude, you can almost yeah, tell. Curb your th- enthusiasm. Yes. B movie. So shallow how I don't know this off the top of my head, but I would almost guarantee that someone on Seinfeld was on that show. Really? Yeah. Because, uh, number one, Costanza was in it. That's okay. not even my reason, but the, the joke about the toe, you remember how the girl, there's like that 10, she's like a 10 yeah. and Costanza, he's like that, bald dude from Seinfeld with the glasses, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's got hair just for men on in that movie, yeah. so it's all filled in. You can see it. It's all filled in. But he, like, thinks he's, you know, uh, Shallow... Have you seen Shallow Hell? I've... I, the name sounds familiar. I might have seen it, but Who's it's the, one of those where I've seen it maybe, like, once and then that's it. Who's that famous doctor at the beginning that, that uh, hypnotizes him? There's that famous doctor and he's, he's around time. nowadays. I see him all the time, like pop Oh, up. Tony Robbins. Robbins. Yeah, Tony. He goes to a Tony Robbins thing, right? And he, and he basically, it's like a motivational slash like advice Oh, thing. Jack Black's in it. Oh, yes. okay, okay, and okay, he, okay, And he gets brainwashed by this guy to think that, to only see girls for their inner beauty. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, okay, okay. So okay, okay, his okay, homie okay. though is just normal, right? Yeah. So he just sees all these girls that are hot and like he's yeah. super shallow. And there's this girl that's like a supermodel, like literally like from like swimsuit edition. Yeah. And he's like... Oh, there's just one thing though and he's like that toe and it's like the middle toe is like it's a longer. little bit longer yeah yeah and he's yeah. like i can't do it the toe yeah. Boy, and that that to me is such a seinfeld that's so seinfeld yeah you're right and so that's why i was ah, thinking okay. it might not be larry david because i feel like i would have known about that but it's somebody it's somebody yeah it's yeah well, let's okay. see so when the paltrow's in it jack like the black writers. jason alexander of course yeah okay okay you uh hit show more there might, might show be. the writers i don't know yeah Let's see. Oh, it just shows the actors. The actors. Full oh, okay. cast. Full crew. Okay. Just look at that. But yeah. Written. And see, I don't even know who these people are. Directed Peter, by Bob Peter Furley. Sean Moyahan. Directed. Yeah, maybe not. But maybe maybe that was from it, Jason it Alexander. It J- Jason yeah. Alexander's own input. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I do remember this. 2001. Dang, dude. That's, dude. That, that is also a movie that I don't know if it would be received as well if it came out now. Yeah. Show yeah. how they make fun yeah. of they make fun of even though it's about like the message of it it's really sweet and everything right they, they're the jokes are all there well the like lead, they're making fun of fat people yeah, and making fun of you know yeah. what I, mean? like, I see the, that the lead yeah. cast would definitely have to not be white yeah. if, <laughs> to apply to yeah we need uh, <laughs> we need the Netflix I think we need version. like a Penelope Cruz <laughs> for the woman <laughs> right. and then we need like a. a what do you think? Like Denzel Washington? Maybe? Denzel. No, no, <laughs> no. It's got to like, be. Uh, 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 what's, what's the other guy that played uh, in Killmonger in uh, uh, Wakanda? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Michael, B. Jordan, Michael B. Jordan. Michael Jordan. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Michael you B. could Jordan. do something like him. Yeah. I was thinking like a Chris Rock, you Chris know? Rock. Someone yeah. like that has. Yeah. yeah. What's her name? Uh, who's that one? Uh, Amber Rose. Or yeah, Amber Rose. One with or the tattoo on her head. Yeah. The one that, yeah. Oh, yeah. It should be her and. Um, uh, like fuck, like Lil Wayne or something, <laughs> <laughs> something so random. Like what the hell? Yeah. The, the what, purple what? scissor edition. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what did Jack Black get, uh, get flamed for? He these things need a lot of flack. Oh, for. oh, his political stuff. Oh, okay. Right? Well, oh, okay. You want to go into it? Uh, it's pretty bad. I mean, it, it, just give me give me like a base synopsis. Yeah, I'll make uh, it I'm quick. curious. I'm curious. He, yeah. he was in Australia. Him okay. and his brother Kyle Gla- Gas or whatever his name. Which is. I didn't even know they had a freaking actual like. It's a legitimate band they have, right? Tenacious, Tenacious D. D. Okay, yeah. okay. Are they like? Is it? Are they? Bro, like, you have to listen to really? at least one of the songs. It's really? really funny. The one song you know I'm talking about. Oh, I'm sure I've heard it. Oh, the, the, <laughs> the one that I, I re- wanna... yeah, yeah, the one <laughs> I remember is. Uh, uh, a tribute to the greatest song ever. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. he, he like had this dream and then he forgot what it was. But so this is a tribute to the best greatest oh, song ever. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? Yeah, but anyway, so okay. he was in Australia. Him and, and Kyle were in Australia. Okay. And it was Kyle's birthday. So they gives him a birthday cake to blow out the candles. And he says, okay, uh, did make a wish. And uh, his wish was, I hope they don't miss next time. Ooh. And Ooh, referring eesh. to the Trump assassination. Yeah. Are you so, kidding me? Yeah. And so. Uh, okay, here it is. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> in Sydney. They were in Sydney on a Sunday, and then he presented him and make a wish. So, Mr. So, yeah. what? Yeah. Wow. Happening, he put his tour on hold because yeah. of it? Well, no, he, they canceled They canceled the whole they tour. Yeah, that's it. the red, yeah. So, what happened was a politician in Australia 
uh, got involved and got them, got them, uh, uh, what's that called when you kick someone out of your country? Um, got them removed from the country, said, you're Exiled. not doing that. Uh, no, uh, deported. deported. Yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah. Something so, that we don't do here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> open the, open Something we're definitely gates. slacking in. Uh, the floodgates. I heard, I, know. People, I heard people are actually going down to spots on the border just to watch. Oh, dude, I'm just going to have a lemonade stand yeah, down there. Yeah, people, people like <laughs> United, States, <laughs> <laughs> United States citizens are just going and standing by the border and they're watching these boats pull up. Have you been seeing all those videos? Well, like in San Diego, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah there's yeah, just like yeah, boats yeah. like, yes. vroom, like, a, they're doing like it welcome Europe to America. Too. And they're all like cheering for him when they run onto the... Jesus, dude. Yeah. No, that's nutty, dude. I mean, we'll look it up. That'd be kind of scary, really honestly. This this issue is, uh, you know, well, look at Eagle it's Pass. Not, Eagle not, Pass is the big, and the it's big not one. racially charged whatsoever. Like that's the thing. A lot of people, for even talking about it as a white man, like you're basically labeled as a racist for even talking well, about it or having a concern. But like San Diego is right by Mexico. Yeah. Like there's no. There's, I'd be scared if I lived in San Diego right now and there's people just flooding into the, my city, you know? Like, mm -hmm. imagine if people were coming directly in to our city. Directly in. Like, there's the line, there's the fence, and then they're all running in. Right. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's nutty, but I'm it's, sure it's... What it is, I mean, it, it's just, it's crazy because there's not enough housing, there's not enough food, there's not enough money, and you're just opening up the floodgates, so now... There's not enough jobs, so now you have a bunch of new people that will work for way lower because they don't have a house, they don't have anything to that cost anything of significance. So, and you know, there now there yeah. there's this new uh, program where they're they want to give like illegal immigrants illegal immigrants twenty five thousand dollars. There's this lady on X. She was a, a black lady who spent, who was talking about, she was just yeah, like sh sad, sad, because she was talking about how um, she had, she saved up 25 grand to buy a food truck and it took her years. She spent, you know, shift after shift after shift and saved all that money. And she finally got that taco truck. And so she, that was her business. That was her business. And then she just said, okay, I'm going to move on to the next thing. So then she went and put her, a taco truck up for sale and or food truck maybe it's, it wasn't a taco truck but a uh, food truck and so this illegal immigrant approached her and he she goes she goes okay do you have any money and he goes oh no 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 but here's the paperwork it's been guaranteed the bank has guaranteed me 25 grand and 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 you'll pay it so she's gonna sell it to him because she needs the money to yeah. move on to her next venture but she's just like it was so sad watching this person who didn't work, didn't yeah. earn anything, crossed a border. That's the only thing he did. Got a check some people never see in a lifetime. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. And then, and then is able to do that. And so then you multiply that by the millions that are in here that are able to do that. You're going to see it with housing. You're going to see it with all kinds of areas. And, and, it's, and the people that it's affecting most, unfortunately, are blacks and Hispanics. And, and that's why they are the ones that are supercharged right now, and they're talking about it, because it is directly impacting them. They're moving into their neighborhoods. They're kicking out. Like, there's a, a Venezuelan in uh, 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 Colorado. There's a Venezuelan gang that has moved into an apartment complex and has kicked everybody out, and they are moving in. So they've taken over an, an entire uh, apartment complex. You could, you could see that. I know we, uh, we might have mentioned this in the past, but... Did you hear about the Seattle Police Department offering illegal immigrants jobs as police officers? I heard them about the military offering them, but no, not Seattle. Police officers. I saw an ad on Instagram for it. So be a law enforcer while you're breaking the law. That's the irony of it, right? <sighs> you, can't, you can't be a banker and then steal the money, too. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is the right one, but... It, it, uh, just look up Venezuelan gang. Uh, oh, yeah, right there. Colorado. Um, so this is where they, they actually robbed a jewelry store. Oh, yeah. They, they robbed a gun store, too. Oh, okay. They've, they've robbed, like, eight gun stores. So they're sharing all of the guns with each other. And they have a whole ac apartment complex to each other. And, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's wow. getting pretty dicey. It's getting... Yeah. It's getting to the point where... <clears throat> 
if you think you're going to, if Donald Trump thinks he's going to get, you know, if he gets elected, if he thinks he's going to deport it, you are going to see an armed conflict. I mean, this is, they've stolen so many guns. They've, you know, there's, it's, this is going to be catastrophic. <clears throat> yeah, it's like, it's just like they're, they definitely added gasoline to the fire at this point with this, you know what I'm saying? And like you said, it's, it's, it's a good point you said that even Hispanics are even calling like them out. Yep. And that, that's where you're like, okay, there's definitely lines being crossed at this point oh, where yeah. they're not, don't, like, I don't think they're contributing anything to like the, to anything in regards to taxes or nothing. But like, what are you doing that you know you can say wholeheartedly you're doing things by the book to where you're paying your fair share in taxes, you're contributing to society, mm -hmm. all that stuff. And they just like, instead of coming over here for a handout. Right. That's the thing. That's the thing that lights me up. Like you come here for handouts. Yes. It doesn't work like that. You know what I'm this, saying? So this is why, like, you know, when when you like my wife is legally immigrated. Yeah. Right. And and it's such a slap in the face to watch everything that we had to go through. Now, when when she got in, she her paperwork was all processed under the Obama administration. So everything was just quick. They were letting anybody and everybody in. Yeah. Right. No, it was just rubber stamp and everything. When Trump got in everything came to a screeching halt. Immigration came to a screeching halt to the point that she was, her visa, uh, all of her paperwork, she was overstaying on. And, and so we kept asking immigration. We're like, hey, she is like legally illegal right now. Yeah. You know, and it, no fault of our own. We've kept every, every uh, appointment. We've done everything. And they said, yeah, yeah, we're just booked. We're way behind. Nothing to worry about. Don't ever believe that because <laughs> if you, you know, you, all, nothing all to it, worry about. That never turns it, out. Well. All it would take would be to get <laughs> pulled over by a police officer. Yeah. Uh, try to get a, on an airplane and run into TSA. Anybody, you, she could have easily been. But we went down to the immigration department or uh, office, and what they did, it was so weird. But they, they took her green card. And they put a little sticker on the back. And I'm like, and I asked, I was very nervous. And I said, listen, I have read this paperwork front and back, side to side. I've read everything that has to do with this process. And nowhere do I see anywhere where this sticker is. And they said, yeah, this is just what we got to do right now. <laughs> just and I'm sticker. like, that gives me no assurance. That whatsoever. is crazy. I mean, I was scared. So we did, we literally did not do any travel. We did nothing. I told her, I said, stay out of, of the eye of any, any government right now. And we got to live under that threat, yeah. even though we were following everything legally and hopefully everything would have been fine if, you know, but dude, I'm telling you, because there was nothing in the paperwork, there's nobody that would have said, oh, yeah, that sticker with that signature yeah. is going to be good enough. Like who anybody could have done that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And so, you know, so, yeah, it, it took some time under Trump. It took it took three more years than it would have normally taken. That's crazy, man. It's, it's just it's such a. Like, where do you begin trying to fix something like that? This capacity, bro. It's like, is there really a set? I'm sure there is, right? Where they could actually add more people to the issue and, you know, technology itself. It's like, dude, do you see what they're doing at football games now? They oh, have the facial, facial recognition. Yeah. Uh, dude, like, yeah. for what, though? Like, that's my question, too. What, what is it really for? We got to look that up. But stuff like that. I mean, they have the technology to do this. But yeah. it's like, do they want to implement it? It's like, how much is it going to cost? I think there are a lot of crimes that go on, though, in, in like big crowds like that that get overlooked. And that may be why. I mean, obviously, it's the beginning of a something we don't want to get into, obviously, as society. But mm -hmm. from a security aspect, with so many people inside of one area, I can see why they would want to do that. Right. Like, I mean, I've seen people get punched and stomped out at Seahawks games. And so pretty much beer dang. spilled on their heads. And then the guy, stand, some other guy gets kicked out. Right. So you know? it pretty much says here that in quotations, the title of this is the NFL will now use facial recognition at every stadium to Whoa. verify the identity of everyone at the game. Okay. <laughs> but, but what, why, what is the, the so it's it, use facial authentication, authentication technology for for workers, work. not everyone at the game. Uh, but like, how do you know that? How do you know that? Oh, though? And so that's just where it to, starts, right? Is, okay. Yeah. Hey, by the way, no, this is not for everybody. This right. is just for the that people that work there. That does make more sense, though, that they're that they're saying that. But I mean, so this is what's crazy. Yeah. So communications director Tim uh, Schlitner said that the league is implementing a new process for people with working credentials who need access to certain parts of the stadium. The new process will not apply to all fans. 
Under the new system, credential holders will be required to submit photos in advance and then facial authentication technology will be used to grant those people to access to parts of stadiums, Schlittner said. Credential holders include team and game day personnel, vendors, media. Yeah, that's about it. Huh. Well, that's uh, that, I mean, again, again, players. Again, that's that's <laughs> how they started, right? right? Like, how do you know? How do you know that it's not going to be point you, I me, mean, or Brad out? You know, what you I'm know saying? how cool I, that is if you're a player, though. On the flip side, like you walk up to the door and you just look at the door, and the door opens. Well, don't they have? Oh, they have like that? I mean, yeah. your retina. What, what, what yeah. is this? Yeah, right. Yeah, we've had this for a while. No, and I also, know. Uh, at the airport, I'm not gonna lie, I did it. Uh, the, the the retina one, where you can actually it'll scan your 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 eye. And you're actually good to go. Really? And uh, you don't have to go through like uh, TSA or anything like that. Oh, clear. Wow. Yeah. Clear. Yeah. Yeah. Have you done that or not? No. No. <laughs> I did the TSA pre check. Yeah. No, this is faster. Like you literally go, it scans your eye, and you're good to go, and they let you go. Wow. That's crazy. Uh, dude, well, government's got your biometrics. I'm in line, dude. <laughs> it's gone. It's going to well, make a, a version 2.0. Speaking 0. of government having biometrics, did you hear about, uh, uh, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, mom. It's a uh, compliment <laughs> to the chef. Compliment like to the chef. Costco dog. Exactly. Yeah. Compliment <laughs> to the chef. Um, but uh, Ancestry DNA, did you hear about this? No. So BlackRock oh, wants no. to buy Ancestry DNA for like $4.3 billion. Yeah, pull it up. Um, I think it's $4.3 billion. Let me see. Uh, news. Just, uh, no. Fucking liar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, fake news. Beat right. that out. Uh, Trying not to cuss. No, nothing comes up. Oh, come on. Dang. Dude. Ancestry Let's, DNA. Go to X. Go to X. Ancestry. <laughs> Ancest, uh, oh, it's, What's it called, though? Ancestry called? DNA. Um, BlackRock Capital. Oh, doesn't okay. own. No, 4.7 Black- billion. Okay. So, let's see. Oh, did not buy. And this is by AI, did. too. Blackstone, another investment management, did in 2020 for about 4.7. The deal gave oh, Blackstone a seventy-five so percent. Yeah. So basically, this is the fear: is that um, y- now you know the people that we're all hiding from, right, are all going to have our biometric data. They're going to have our, or they're going to have our DNA information. They're going to have all of that. That we here we were just spitting in a tube, you know, figuring out, hey, where's my long lost family. <laughs> You know, and, and like people for like me, I'm like, hmm, how much indigenous am I? Six percent. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. yeah, dude. So what can they do? Dude. Like, what would be the one fear, though? Like, that's kind of what let's get into that. Like, what would be the fear of, of a, a company or a mega corporation, whatever, having people's DNA just like that? So DNA tells a big story, much more than what we know about. OK. But it can go into psychology. It can go into there's just so much information in DNA. And if they can crack the code and they can make they can figure out what makes you tick, they can tailor your preferences on your phones or whatever. But they more more importantly, they can figure out society. So if they figure out what your threats are or what what the society's threats, what what can they but on an individual basis. Right. So at this point, we know that. Brett's going to fall off the lid, fly off the lid uh, if so and such and such happens. And then but but for Brad, it's going to take him a little bit longer. But at this point, he's going to fly off the lid for Eddie. He's going to it's going to take him a little bit longer and then he's going to go. So then they can tailor their secret, you know, like hitmen or government, you know, FEMA camp officials and they can round us all up. That's that's uh, that's pushing it. You know, that's taking it to the extreme. But with the way that the government is going right now, it wouldn't surprise me. And if you know you question that, uh, look at all of the evidence being scrubbed from that Trump assassination back in in July. Yeah, they are scrubbing all of the evidence. Uh, yeah, I heard that at this point they're not even like there's different like there's different videos coming out too of when the police officers were climbing up to the area where like the uh, the shooter was at that point and. I mean, at that point, to me, it's just like the, the action to actually go up there to try to apprehend this guy mm-hmm. or try to, like, at least see what's going on. It doesn't seem like it's that type of ser- Secret Service-esque 
type of, I guess, uh, type of action, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, something something just really sits out with me with the whole thing. You know, we talked we talked about this before on the past previous episode. Go check that out. But yeah, it's that that to me still seems kind of fishy overall. It's just you know? yeah, the the but it's just weird how things keep happening, right? Yeah. So like the latest thing is that the uh, uh, the body. So a Republican senator was doing was trying to investigate, right? So he says, "Hey, I want to I want to see the body," and uh, and for whatever reason, I don't know why he wanted to see Thomas Matthew Crook's body, but he wanted to see the body. Yeah. So he said, "Okay, well, uh, you got to go to the FBI." The FBI said, "Oh, we gave the body back to the parents." So they and then the parents cremated him. So ten days after the attempted sa assassination, his his body was cremated, meaning you know maybe whatever, but maybe it wasn't even him. Right. And is, how, why are we trying to get rid of someone so quick? Yeah. And then on top of the fact that his digital phone has been with all these federal agents. So the, the, the question is, with how much evidence or how much stonewalling the FBI is doing right now, they're just keeping their lips zipped, is, wow, was this guy an asset? <laughs> I mean, I'm yeah. serious. I'm no. dead serious. So that's one thing I didn't know, too. They cremated his body already? Cremated 10 days after. Whoa. Yeah. Now, though, that. Yep. That's crazy. Why? That's the thing. That's insane. Red so, flags, people. Red flags. Yeah. But in regards to DNA, this is something I wanted to bring up to the table a while ago. And good thing we have uh, our, lovely producer, uh, our lovely producer. Oh, yeah. For bringing this up. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, so we can definitely look up stuff on the fly. But one thing I wanted to bring up, uh, and since we're talking about DNA, there's this gentleman uh, that's uh, here. It says he's 45 years old. He's trying to crack the code and pretty much of uh, how we age. And reverse young, aging. Reverse aging. Uh, so he's a CEO. He's spending millions a year to be pretty much 18 years old. Uh, you know, old and he's doing it at every capacity in regards to just what he eats, he exercises, the amount of sunlight he gets, you name it. He's being very precise uh, on what he's doing. And he's, and he's also um You can't scroll past the calculations of erections per night. Jeez. <laughs> what? It says where, it right where, there. Where? The range from electromagnetic pulses to improve the muscles in his pelvic floor to a device calculating the number of erections he has per night. Dude. Dude. What the? <laughs> we were just about to scroll right what past that. What is that, that number? <laughs> 14. No. So, so, yeah. And also, he's actually having uh, blood transfer from his young son to him. Adrenochrome. So it's, it's crazy, dude. I'm like, is this this is, this is like... I mean, think about it, dude. If we get to that point, I don't know if in our lifetime, but I mean, with AI now getting smarter and smarter as it progresses, right? Uh, Will we live to see the, the time and like the moment where they're officially cracked the code on aging and we can be young forever? Let's see what this fool looks like. Let's go down. So, so that's him right there. That's getting his, his skin, I mean. skin treatment. Yep. Definitely doesn't look like a male. So <laughs> it looks like he's like in high school. So he says <laughs> Johnson Johnson sees a team of thirty doctors for regular and sometimes invasive tests for what they named Project Blueprint, according to Bloomberg. Um, let's see, a twenty year old Routine, doctor, MRIs. regenerative medicine physician on the project is dedicated to help reverse the age process in every one of Johnson's organs and charges up a thousand an hour of patients interested in the vast testing that Johnson participates in. And Bloomberg reports. Um, while the data is preliminary, Johnson has a heart of a 37-year-old and the skin of a 28-year-old and the lung capacity of an 18-year-old. According to tests, his doctors performed his overall biological age is at least five years younger, per the report. Wow. What do you think, Brett? Uh, do you, you want to be young forever? No. No? <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm okay with going to the next life. <laughs> <laughs> so right here it says uh, he has his own medical facility at home. Also adheres to the hyper strict exercise and eating ritual, taking two dozen supplements, other medicines at 5 a.m. each day, consuming 1,977 vegan calories a day, exercising for an hour and hitting the hay at the same time after using blue light evasive glasses. So it's I'm curious and I don't know. But, you know, I'm in dark trenches of conspiracy. And okay. When you were talking wow. about the part where he was uh, doing wall. blood transfusion from his lower or his younger son to yeah. him, uh, that's been a very prevalent rumor in with the elites, like yeah. with, in Washington, D.C., uh, in Hollywood and in, in corporate business um, where, you know, we see how many 
children are kidnapped mil- by the millions. A lot of kids right? missing, yeah. And, uh, and, and so the rumor is that these kids are drained of their blood, so they're basically discarded, and then they're given to these uh, politicians and these, these people. That's why they look so young for so long. It's, you know, whatever. And yeah. so here he is basically admitting to the same thing. <laughs> that he's doing, yeah. It's just he's, but but he's adding more like a like a legitimate way of doing like it, it's right? Like a natural, yeah, like, yeah. See, but is that out of everything I'm seeing, right? Okay. That blood is the only thing that really stands out about what he's doing. You you can eat right, you can do all that, and we all know that that helps. But the taking his son's blood, yep, that's what sticks out to me there. Yeah, and and in you know the fact that these politicians and whatever uh, are rumored to be doing this. Yeah. So weird. I, I think that's the, that's the key. I've right always there. been curious too, though. What, what's the big, um, how, what's that word? Uh, like, what is the biggest draw to this to where, like, why would you want to live forever? Like, in my opinion, life, I feel like you have a certain, a certain term of like how many years you're going to be put on this planet. Like only the highest power knows if you're a believer of that, but I think it's like, you know, you have your beginning and you have your end, unfortunately, you know, everybody does. It's almost like you're trying to kind of cut path course of like life in general, how it's supposed to be written. Mm-hmm. And you're trying to play like this certain power where you are going to call your, you know, you're the one that's going to make your ending, not anything else, yeah. like all natural way. Right. And I don't know. I just don't, I, I always wonder like, what's the big drive to wanting to live forever? Like what's the objective just to say that you did it? Or the, there's, there's got to be something behind it. I mean, it, look right? at all the stories we've heard throughout our whole life. Fountain of youth. Yeah. That's yeah. always yeah. been a thing for mm-hmm. mankind. Mankind wants to live forever. Um, and it's just, it, for a lot of people, death is a hard thing. Aging is a hard thing. Yeah. We know. Yeah. We're, you know, we're getting older or, you know, we're not, we don't, we're losing the pep in our step. Yeah. We're not, you we're know? not young pups anymore, you know? No. No. <laughs> and so, you know, this guy wants to do all that, that stuff. And, um, but I mean, look at how much work it takes. Oh, to dude. Do I mean, I don't want to get about five in the morning every day. I'm out and, my money. and all that. You know I mean, saying? you have to be rich money. to do that too. So I'm not vegan. I like meat. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> pause. So, I'm eating that hog. <laughs> good pause. Good pause. No, but yeah, it's just, it's always, I guess, what's the fascination? That's what, that's the word I was looking for. Like, what is the big fascination in regards to just wanting to live forever? You know, it's like, there's some point in time where like you said, like, what is on the other side? Like, when you think about no longer being here, like, is the journey continues. There's always that, like, even in, in Egyptian times, they talk about the journey continues even after life, right. Right? right? So, in a sense, I'm curious to know, is it scary? Yeah, there's, like, there's been a time where I freak myself out thinking about that. Like, like you just close your eyes and it's just dark and that's it. There's nothing. Like, I freak myself out. There's times where, like, I'm at night laying in bed, just, like, like everything's just coming down on me. Think about space, time. Damn. Black holes, like it just it it literally clips on me, and I'm like I freak myself out. Dude, yeah. with no weed. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. Oh like literally no. There's it's just it's crazy. But anyways, yeah, like you think about death, like what's beyond that? Like what do you what do you see? Do you so see anything? It's funny that you are bringing this up. Yeah, because out of the blue, yeah, uh, a gentleman that I talked to, um, just randomly said, "Hey, Brett, I got a book for you." I said, oh, yeah, right on. I love books. I love reading. And yeah. maybe I, I make it known that I like reading or whatever. But anyway, he just randomly brings in a book one day. And it's uh, it's the, the title is called Proof of Heaven. Okay. And it's a story about uh, the author. His name is Eben Alexander. He's a neurosurgeon. And uh, he had uh, uh, E. coli. And E. coli is one of those things that gets into your spinal cord, goes into your brain, shuts your brain down. And and you you can you fall into a coma, and there's a high percentage rate that you're gonna die, right? You're gonna succumb to this. So he was talking about how, getting this infection, right? And he said he knew when he passed out. He he was still awake when they took him to the emergency room, but eventually when he's at the hospital, he went out, right? Fell into a coma mm-hmm. for seven days. Damn. His his brain, his neocortex, that's the outer layer, but that's where the brain activity is. So, mm-hmm. like, if you're uh, hallucinating, you're doing, you know, any type of hallucinating, mushrooms, whatever, ayahuasca, whatever, 
it's the activity in your uh, neocortex is where all that is. Well, his was completely shut down. He was essentially brain dead. There was nothing, there was no activity going on. So he was talking about, he went through this like murky level Mm -hmm. and he said he felt more real and more alive than anything on earth. Now he went into what he was calling heaven and he was describing this beautiful place where there were things above him that he said everything had a feeling. The, the, the ground, the people, the everything, everything that was there, you could feel it. And then when you saw an entity, you, you were talking to each other, and, but you weren't even using words. You just had feelings. And like telepathic. Almost yeah, yeah, along those lines. Hmm. Um, and so he was there for seven days, and he was just talking about how beautiful it was. But he knew that eventually they told him, they said, hey, you got to go back and we'll show you why. And, and then when he was passing through this like portal, he could see like there was almost like this jello film or whatever. And these faces were coming out through that thing. And there were six faces, but he said, one of them, you have to go back because one of them it will be an absolute betrayal if you don't come back. And it was his son. He had a nine year old son. So he had to come back because his son really needed him back. Mm. So they, they put him back. And so as a neurosurgeon, someone who knew, he always discounted uh, near-death experiences. He always discounted the whatever science couldn't answer, he would just just dismiss it, right? And he was talking about one of his, his uh, uh, patients who had told him a story about uh, his, her husband had, had died. And apparently the daughter, their daughter, had a dream about her dad. And she said, yeah, my dad had a yellow shirt on and a fedora and she the mom was laughing and she's like what's so funny and and so she's telling the doctor this and 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 she goes we my husband and i when we got married we went on our honeymoon and our luggage got lost well in our luggage was the yellow shirt and the the fedora and that was the shirt that was his favorite shirt that was the shirt i liked him to wear and and whatever but when he when it got lost in the luggage we didn't ever um, replace it. And we never talked about it. It was just something we kept between us. Well, he came back from heaven, from Diane or whatever, and went into the daughter and told the daughter that story, basically to tell the mom. And so, so the, but the doctor would, 